tell us a little bit about about what you do and how you're connected with art in Moorhead. Um, my name is Allison Coster. I work at Concordia in the science facility. Um, I have a background in chemistry and in theater. I have an MFA in scenic and lighting design and technical production and have been in Moorhead now for about three and a half years. And I'm looking to get more involved. Great, welcome. Uh, I'm Jonathan Rutter. I'm the uh, executive director and curator at the Rourke Art Gallery and Museum here in Moorhead. Um, I've, oh boy, uh, grew up here. Uh, lived out east briefly where I uh, got my uh, MFA in painting and uh, I'm back and happy about it. So eager to be of service. Great, we're happy to have you with us. So welcome to you as well. And uh, welcome to the rest of you here today and our, our guest, uh, Derek Lapointe. Uh, we look forward to visiting with you uh, in a few minutes. Uh, the uh, next item on the agenda is to um, amend the agenda. If anyone has an amendment, uh, please uh, um, make that known at this point. I have one item that we will just tack on with the election of officers. So there's a new program called the Moore Heart Awards that the city has developed, and they are requesting a representative from the Art and Culture Commission to serve on that uh, review committee. So just to add that one item. Okay, very good. Anything else, anyone? All right. Uh, moving on then to the minutes from our last meeting, which were on January 25th. Um, and you should have all received that in your packets. Um, I hope, you, hope you've had a chance to read through the minutes from before. And um, uh, as soon as someone is so inclined, we entertain a motion to approve the minutes from January 25th. I'll move to approve. Larry, is there a second? Second. Nat. All in favor of uh, approving the minutes, signify by saying aye or raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Okay, and the minutes are approved. Um, and uh, now uh, moving on, on the agenda, we um, have citizens to be heard. And um, I'm not seeing any other citizens um, in attendance here, is there anyone that is connected um, by phone or audio? None at this point, okay. And uh, moving on then to the downtown plan next steps. Uh, we have uh, our guest with us today, Derek Lapointe, who's the president and CEO of Downtown Moorhead Incorporated. And welcome to the Art and Culture Commission. Uh, we're happy to have you here today. Derek. Thank you very much. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. I was having audio issue, issues earlier today. So if anybody, uh, Excuse me, breaking up, just uh, just tell me, speak up, please. Um, <clears throat> I think Kim's gonna try to pull up the, the summary document here, but um, obviously we've, uh, we've gone through a long process through our downtown master plan. Many of you uh, participated in that, whether that was through our public engagement opportunities that we had. Uh, we had some that were in person. Uh, at the Yum Comp Center, we, we went to Bridge Bash, we went to uh, Dairy Queen, we tried to get a, a broad spectrum of, of folks that um, ultimately needed to provide feedback to, to put a really quality plan together. Overall, we had over 700 individuals uh, participate in our online survey, which is unprecedented numbers for, for Moorhead kind of engagement in a plan such as this. Uh, we had hundreds of people attend the, the open houses. So we feel really confident that one, this this plan really is grassroots. It's it's coming from the community. It, it's it's the needs and the desires of of where we need to go as a community to to make a downtown that is not only aesthetically appealing, uh, 
you know, encouragement of development, but also a place that our, our residents um, and the community can be proud of. So we've gone through a lot of changes over the last three years and, and maybe as a little background, many of you probably know, but I have a unique role with, with, the, with the city here. Three years ago, uh, Downtown Moorhead Inc. was established. Uh, it's privately funded by uh, a lot of private investors, including um, American Crystal Sugar, Eventide, Samford, uh, Shields, Hornbachers, but we also have the universities as supporters as well. So we have a good mix of public and private support. Within six months of starting, uh, the city of Moorhead reached out to me to see if I would be interested in doing economic development work under contract. So we do hold a contract for uh, economic development citywide, and it seems to be a pretty good fit. It's became a, a pretty good um, partnership with the city and that we're really trying to uh, build relationships and trust with the development community and the business community. And I feel like we can do that since we're a little bit of a at length from the city where we can almost be that private um, private kind of voice uh, going through the city hall channels to develop policies and programs that make sense for our business community. Um, I'll be I'll be pretty short, I guess, in, in this document, and there's a lot of information online as Kim is showing you here. We have a, a summary document, an executive summary that's up on the screen right now. The whole plan itself is, is uh, on here as well, where there's about 55 pages. Um, it's pretty easy read, I'll say. We tried to make it very um, comprehensible for people to, to understand and digest. We also did a uh, video um, that has about a, a, about a half hour of, of presentation from our consultant group, Stantec. They uh, provided a, a great overview of the plan itself and the elements of it. So if you really want a condensed version uh, as the consultants kind of walk through, that's a good piece. And we also recorded the question and answers piece of it so you can hear people from the public that are answering, uh, asking questions and we're responding to as well. Um, but going back to the executive summary, uh, maybe a couple things for, for the group to, to kind of look at, and I think that's really important, is we tried to create a vision and goal for downtown and, and our study area itself really went from the river to about 17th Street. So. I will say that's still a pretty large area uh, to define as a downtown, especially in, in downtown Moorhead as we don't have that consistency of development quite yet. Um, we, we're getting there, um, but we still kind of have scattered pieces of development as we go. Um, when you look at that map up on the screen, we really created uh, a couple different uh, segments here you'll see number one, kind of right where that number one is in a darker kind of red uh, hue is the Moorhead Center District. This is where you know the Moorhead Center Mall is. Um, we also have the lighter shade kind of red, pinkish color is the downtown mixed use area. And you'll see a dashed circle that kind of surrounds that area. That is um, what we're defining as a five minute walk from the center point, kind of walking across as a five minute walk and for, for an area to be successful, um, we feel that it's in, uh, really crucial to have uh, density within that five minute walk shed. We want uh, lots of people, lots of business, um, and that's where we're kind of building to. Uh, we talk about a thousand housing units, and when I say housing units, that could be you know affordable housing, low income housing, student housing, workforce housing, market rate housing, right? A uh, variety of housing is what we need. Uh, about a thousand units of density can support about 50,000 square feet of retail. Um, and we don't have that density yet. And that's, that's very glaring at this point in time. Um, we also uh, focus on that kind of purple area, which was a little bit on the outskirts of town is the Creative Pioneers District. We know there's a lot of existing uses over there, whether they're uh, auto mechanic type places, um, almost hybrid industrial to a sort. Um, we know we're still gonna have uses like that, um, but we need areas and flexible zoning that can encourage uh, multiple uses that still provide that vibrant use. Um, could be craft brewery and it could be art space that we talk about. Um, 
you know, a fire night, a fire line neon with uh, Chris Orth, you know, places like that that create small scale manufacturing to a degree that still adds a quality to our overall purpose. Um, so we, we defined a vision, we defined goals, which is, you know, authentic, vibrant, equitable, and inclusive. Uh, we looked at those character districts and defined each of them. Um, the other thing that I think is important to kind of note that I, I, I feel that this group uh, really could get a handle on is on the right hand side of the screen. And I don't know if everybody can see it. I got a little like gray square that kind of covers some of the uh, goals. I don't know if you can see that camera or not, but um, we just can't see the first goal or the first uh, line there. There we go. Um, so the key initiatives. So we have placemaking. Um, talk about creative uh, uses and ways to define uh, places. So talking about low low cost infrastructures and strategies to really create vibrancy within our communities, and that could be places like in between the library and the Rook, uh, where Jonathan's at. Right? How do you activate spaces there? It could be the riverfront. Um, and we see a prime example of that with Mary's Tunnel right now and how popular that's become. Um, how do you continue that energy and activity when it's warmer out, right? How do we get um, the same level of interest with, uh, even with the rentals of snowshoes and cross-country ski, uh, skis down at Yumcoms, they've doubled the amount of rentals within the first weekend uh, this year when those rentals used to be up by MD Johnson Park. So how do you, create energy and activation off of that site that we're starting to build. Uh, placemaking can also be uh, art initiatives too. And I know Larry's called me about the sculpture walk and other things that um, could really add value. Uh, other key initiatives include the Moorhead Center Mall. We just know that that's such a large uh, real estate uh, within our, our downtown district. and. Um, I'll just say it, it's 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 tired in spaces, right? We we know there's some maintenance issues. We know the vacancies with the old Herbergers. Um, those aren't easy spaces to fill at this point in time. Um, but we're trying to be creative with the ownership and the existing businesses of what that space could potentially look like long term. Um, Woodlawn Point is a, a a place that's on the south uh, end of uh, downtown, kind of disconnected from our downtown, but it's. Uh, within Woodlawn Park, it's the former power plant site. City Council at this point in time is, has not made any action on this, but at the time when we did our plan, it was a part of our work study of, of potentially looking at uh, development opportunities here. Um, and so we'll kind of see what comes out of that as we, we uh, will take direction from City Council at that point in time. Um, the other one that I think could be extremely impactful to our downtown is the 11th Street underpass. Um, now, granted, this is still probably a number of years out, um, but we all know it's it's progressing much quicker than the other underpass, so we have to be planning and prepared. Um, we do not want this to basically just segment our downtown. We we got great uses like you know junkyard and and the Van A project and others. Uh, that have popped up on the east end of our downtown. Uh, how we design and how we creatively look at that um, underpass and that we're functioning it not only for automobiles, but for, for bikers, for pedestrians, uh, walking to Hornbachers, walking to uh, in between our restaurants. We really have to be conscious of how that is designed. Um, so we're, we're excited there. The Minnesota DOT is, um, put together a task force that looks at the visual aesthetic of that design. I don't think anybody on the Arts and Culture Commission is on that, Kim, uh, but maybe that's something we could look at is trying to get somebody from this group uh, on that task force. I think that might be very helpful when we're looking at this because in our plan specifically, we called out for, uh, if we have large vacant walls, you know, imagine 20 feet, 20 foot high walls, um, retaining walls that need to be in that segment. We don't just want blank, dry, dead spaces that are so cold and, and um, nobody wants to, to be by. Uh, so we, we have been looking at the, the enhancements of arts, uh, design elements, colors, um, even to the point of looking at areas that we may not see as potential redevelopment areas that we could use green space and, um, and just 
architecture from a, a landscape perspective that breaks up that hardscape that could potentially be there. Um, so maybe that's an opportunity that we could have this group be a part of that uh, visual quality study. I think we've had just two meetings, but it's very early in the process. So I think that's something that um, we can certainly get somebody up to speed in as well. Um, I'll maybe just end with that. Again, I, I feel really confident with the work that was done. This was about an 18 month process. Um, we got again tons of engagement, which which feels good when you're when you're bringing something forward that this this does align. We know that COVID certainly has impacts on on where we go, especially from a development standpoint. And you know the office and retail market is is such a a big unknown at this point in time. Um, but we also know that this plan really sets this vision for where we go as a as a, a community and the development community the business community are buying into it we're getting the phone calls uh, we're getting the level of interest that says we like where moorhead's going we believe that this can they can turn for the better um, and they can stand behind a plan like this as something that knows that consistent uses and development will be happening as we we move forward so uh, with that i i'll maybe stop i would love to hear your thoughts um, you answer any questions you may have. Uh, implementation is, is something that we're gonna be constantly uh, talking about and working towards. Um, we, we probably are looking at creating some type of small task force that would help with these strategies, but an implementation strategy of, of this large of a plan is not just held within one organization, right? It's the city, it's the sub task forces of the city, the, you know, arts and culture being one of them, uh, Downtown Moorhead Inc., Moorhead Business Association, um, many, many others that are all working towards uh, the implementation of the overall plan. So uh, with that, I'll stop and, uh, and look forward to your comments and questions. Thank you. Well, thank you, Derek. Uh, that's very informative and um, it's exciting to um, think about this plan and to, uh, to to look at, you know, what you've put together already. And also just to hear some of your insights on, um, you know, where you're hoping this might go and that, um, you know, it's it certainly has to be a community-wide effort, right? I mean, we've got to have, we've got to have constituents from, uh, from all different areas that, um, you know, that have some input into the process. And so I, I, I appreciate that. Um, and I think, you know, as a, as a Moorhead resident, this is something that's exciting, you know, on a personal level, as well as, uh, you know, for the, for the, you know, the, the infrastructure here of the, of the community that we're, that we've chosen to be uh, involved with. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to hear and see that you, uh, that you do um, honor the, the art and culture perspective um, as we move forward with this, because, um, you know, so many times um, in so many places, not, not here, but in other places, um, that, that element of design is not always uh, taken seriously, right? And, and we all know, um, you know, the fallout from that, if you, if you really don't, it's, you, you have, um, you know, you don't have as vibrant a community, uh, certainly. So, um, so well, if, I, if, I, if I can add that too, and, and I didn't stress on this probably enough, I think we're, we're heading as a community and as a, uh, well, basically any, any strong community at this point in time is creating destination based uh, experiences. You, you have to, uh, not just set up a, a generic coffee uh, store on the corner, right? People are looking for that experiential um, place, uh, somewhere they can bring their family. Uh, we talk about from you know eight to eighty, right? Anybody should be able to have a, a quality experience. So, uh, how we're looking at design elements of a of a building, how we're connecting to the riverfront, how we're looking at micro transit, and how we're connecting. Uh, places is extremely important and and certainly art and and design uh, plays a very heavy experience um, uh, well it gives yeah, that layer of experience um, to enhance our downtown so it's very important yeah 
Yeah. So um, we we all want this to happen quickly. <laughs> you know, I mean, we want to we want to really. Um, I, I know it doesn't, but I mean, that's, um, you know, you, you wish that these kinds of transformations could happen um, quicker than they do, but, um, but you know, as long as we know that there's progress being made, and um, I think the community likes to have that sort of information as well, that, you know, even though we don't always see the progress, uh, to know that things are moving behind the scenes is, you know, is uh, you know a, a little bit of um, satisfaction anyway. Anyone else have comments or questions for Derek? I, yeah, I think Larry. Carrie Carrie Winterstein is on that committee, on the underpass committee. So we do have a past member on it. Yes, that's correct. Uh, that is correct. Yep, Carrie is uh, on that. I turned my video off. I saw myself chopping a little bit. So hopefully you can hear me all right. Um, but yeah, Carrie, Carrie is on there and she's been a great uh, voice for um, the arts and, and design elements of it for sure. Great, anybody else have any anything for Derek before you? I, I'll maybe just, I can close with one, one last thing if you'd like. Um, I think one thing for this group to, to consider and to, to be conscious of too is, I, I know our city manager, Dan Molly, is really into this placemaking effort. Um, there's, there's a lot of groups that do this very well within our community. Um, so I think lifting up some of those things could be in those groups could be a really unique opportunity for us. So I believe that um, there's opportunities to come. I think more conversations are gonna be happening over the next couple months. And, um, and maybe that's something that this group um, can support, whether that's through viewpoints and conversations, uh, ideas. Um, and we are happy to incorporate this group in, in a lot of conversations when it comes to implementation. So stay tuned for uh, maybe some outreach as we look at different ideas that are coming our way. Definitely. Um, we'll certainly be eager to be part of that. All right, anything else, anybody? Derek, thanks uh, very much for, for uh, sharing your time with us today and uh, your insight and uh, your talent and, and um, energy. So um, I guess we don't have any more questions at this time. So um, once again, thank you and we'll hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much all. I appreciate everything you do for Moorhead and I'm an open book, so if you have any questions, ideas, you want to bounce off me. Um, if you don't have my contact, Kim can hopefully share it with you. I'm, I'm more than happy to have conversations with any one of you. So thank you for your time today. Great. You're welcome. All right. Uh, moving on through our um, agenda here, the next item is annual report and election officers. And uh, I'll pass this over to Kim if you'd like to, um, to walk us through the annual report. Sure. All right, so starting on page four of your packet, you can see um, the previous year's membership and the projects that were implemented last year. You can see each of the benches that were um, installed. So we partnered with Moorhead High School art students and they submitted art that was considered, and we followed our public art policy process, which includes having the art review team do an initial technical review, and then the Art and Culture Commission makes a recommendation, and City Council has a final decision on the art and the location for each work. So things to look forward to, and as we go on to the next portion of, um, of election of officers and, and representatives to different groups. It gives you a little bit of background on, on the process and what the duties might be for those team members. Thanks. And, and also, um, yeah, under the 2021 projects, it's kind of interesting to see a number of things that we've been discussing over the past few months. 
um, and that are in various stages of um, of uh, process, uh, depending on a lot of a lot of things, I believe. Uh, but um, yeah, we've got a few things to um, to work on in this coming year. That's for sure. So, election of officers is the next item here, and um, we need to annually elect a chair and a vice chair for a one-year term for this um, for this committee. And uh, then there are a number of other uh, designated representatives for various things. Uh, so at this point, uh, we will um, entertain a motion to uh, recommend a chair and a vice chair uh, for the Art and Culture Commission for 2021. Tim, have you been chair for one year or longer? I have been chair for one year. Well, I'd like to nominate you for a second term. Thank you. I would. I would. I would accept that. Need a second. I'll second that. <laughs> Motion and second. Uh, do we need to vote on these separately, Kim, or or together? I think we could do it together. Okay. I guess I don't know if there's any contention otherwise of of the the vice, um, but or else I think we could do it all together. Anybody else uh, have a nomination for chair or for vice chair? Current vice chair is Car was, was Carrie Winterstein, and she's no longer on the board, so or on the council. So we'll need to um, to uh, have a volunteer for vice chair. Nat, would you be willing to serve as vice chair? Were you asking me, Larry? Yes, I am. I would be willing, yes. I'll, I nominate you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I'll uh, second that. Any other nominations? It's tough with a small group, <laughs> and especially with two people in their so first. Many two people, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, Kim, do you want to call the election then? Yeah. Sure. Allison. Hi. Jonathan. Hi. Tim. Hi. Nat. Hi. Larry. Hi. And thank you for um, your support uh, and for uh, your willingness to serve, Nat. I uh, appreciate uh, the opportunity to serve on this commission, honestly. And I hope that we can have at least one meeting in person this year. Yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. Um, this has sort of been like the virtual year. Anyway, um, then moving on to, uh, to the next um, items here. Uh, we have, uh, we need to appoint membership uh, or elect membership to uh, the public art policy art review team. And um, so this would be, uh, we would need to have two art and culture commission members um, and then uh, an art and com council commission council representative and an art culture liaison. Oh, I'm sorry, this is what the ART is. It's two people from this commission, um, one person from the council, the one person from the staff uh, and the city planner or designee and parks and rec director or designee and the public works director or designee. And these are the folks that, uh, that meet whenever we have uh, a process to review uh, submitted work for whatever process, uh, whatever project we're working on at the time, whether it's a, uh, a submission for um, like the student art benches or some of the other ones that that we did a couple of years ago uh, were were there there was a, there was a, a gift to this to the city for art and we had um, we had a call for art and any time that there's a call out and we need um, some screening of the art then this group comes together so what we need are two people from this uh, group that would be willing to serve on that art review team. And I'd like to clarify that Larry is automatically on it. So we don't need to double up on that. He would be our, 
our council representative who has that dual hat of also being on this committee. So I can tell you that it's not a it's not a huge commitment of time. Um, it, it, usually, there's one meeting uh, of uh, of the of this team uh, when the when the uh, submission deadline has passed and uh, the pieces that we need to review are are all in order and we need to make some kind of a decision on, on prioritizing or, or selecting or screening uh, submissions whatever they happen to be um, so you know we don't have anything in the works right now as far as a, a call for art so you know in the, in the first Two three months of this year, there there aren't going to be any meetings, and I would I would guess that it's two or three meetings a year, maybe at the most for this that I've been involved with. Does anyone want to volunteer to be on this committee? Allison and Jonathan, thanks very much. Happy to have both of you do that. It's a good way to get to know the other folks that are in the. Um, those other various positions within the city um, structure as well so so thanks to both of you do we need to elect them or just those are designations right yeah i don't know if it needs to be quite as formal okay perhaps we'll wait until we um if we get down through all of these and then we'll just have one motion to uh, to endorse everyone sure uh, the Moorhead Community Fund um, is also uh, looking to um, have a designee to serve on the Moorhead Community Fund Advisory Committee. And I believe last year that Carrie served on this was the designee, is that correct, Kim? And how often does this committee meet? It, it meets quarterly. Um... And I don't know if that's uh, like the January meeting was canceled. So it, it's kind of as needed, but uh, there are scheduled meetings quarterly. And Larry, do you also serve on this? I, I do serve on it. And we, in the time I've been on, we've, I've had one meeting. I've had one meeting. So it's not, it's, a, it's an early morning meeting or that's, and in there, it's about an hour, you know, or something, yeah. So I can give a little background if, if that would help. Yeah. Yeah. So the community fund is a newer and or kind of project that the city has endured where they have partnered with the um, FM Area Foundation. Um, and it's a committee that kind of facilitates ways that we can work on projects that need donations or supplemental funding. So it's it's a way that the city can take donations through the FM Area for Foundation. And there have been projects designated by the park board. Um, but then, um, like Tim had mentioned, the call for art, we had also received a substantial uh, donation for, for public art. And so this group got involved because of that donation. Um, and so it would be just looking at different projects um, and then seeing if we can find some champions or helping work towards ways to try to get projects implemented. But it's a new committee, so um, the exact path in which um, the tasks are de developed and disseminated are, are still kind of um, being defined. Okay. Is anyone interested in serving on this committee as a representative from the Art and Culture Commission? I would be. Would you? If you don't okay. want to, yeah. That'd be great. Anybody else? Do we need to elect Nat? <laughs> okay. And uh, then finally, Kim, you have one more committee that you need to rep for? So within the last month or so, a new award has been developed for the city called the More Heart Award, where community members or, or citizens can nominate a group, a person, somebody who's making great um, impact to our community. And so as these nominations come in, um, I'm not sure if they know exactly how often they'll meet. I think it's supposed to be approximately quarterly, but uh, we'll, we'll see since we haven't, that group hasn't met yet. Um, but it would be just reviewing all of the applications or, or submittals and um, making uh, recommendations. Okay, I'm willing to serve on that committee if, um, if any 
if it, nobody else is. That way all of us have at least one. Or we could we could elect someone who's not here today. All right. <laughs> all right. Let's do uh let's do a blanket motion for um, all of these designees. Um, and I'll move that uh, those who have volunteered be appointed uh, to those committees. I'll second. All right. All in favor, signify by aye. 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 And opposed, same sign. All right. Thanks, everybody, for your willingness to, to serve. Um, then the, um, the last item on our agenda today is um, the... Uh, member reports and updates. Uh, this is always a time where uh, we as Arts and Culture Commission members uh, share what may be going on in our artistic lives um, with organizations uh, that we are part of or uh, with any kind of um, art event or happening that, uh, that we wanna make public at this point. So does anybody have any things that they'd like to share for the upcoming month here or so? I've got, I've got a couple things I'll share. If, okay. um, so we have a guest artist this week, actually, at Concordia, a virtual guest artist. His name is Dr. Ron McCurdy. He's a jazz trumpeter, author, educator, an entrepreneur based now at University of Southern California, although at one time he taught at the University of Minnesota, which is how I got to know him. Anyway, Ron is a really dynamic, creative person and a great thought leader. Uh, we had him Friday talking about entrepreneurship in the arts and a book he wrote um, tomorrow night. He's doing something on um, education, specifically about motivation and diversity, equity, and inclusion. And then Thursday night, he's uh, presenting a virtual performance of a work that he created about a decade ago called the Langston Hughes Project, which is a jazz spoken word film project uh, that he's performed live many times, including here in Moorhead um, about three years ago, but this is a virtual performance. So uh, for people who might be interested, the easiest way to find the links is to go to the music department performances and events page at Concordia. And maybe the easiest thing for me to do is to post a link in the chat that will take you there. Um, it's just concordiacollege.edu slash music calendar. Okay. And when you go there, you'll see, um, as, you, as you scroll down, you'll see a bunch of guest artist things that are happening, including this week with Ron. And the only other thing I'll mention is just that um, we do have Concordia Music Ensembles performing uh, via streaming this semester on a kind of a more normal performance calendar, which is also available on the same web page. But right now we're not allowing the public to come to them yet, we're just streaming them. So if people wanna watch those, they certainly can. We had a great choir concert yesterday with our new uh, choir teacher, Kira Winter. Great. Thank you. Yeah, Allison. In a couple of weeks, well, about what, three weeks or so, the National Book Awards, uh, there will be virtual readings and conversation, uh, March 11th, which is a Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Uh, you can, there's a link um, at the concordiacollege.edu website slash national book. All right, always a very interesting event. Hmm. Anything else anybody have to, to share about what might be going on in their world? Sure, uh, over at the Rourke, we've got uh, a special permanent collections exhibit that'll be opening this weekend. Uh, Philip J. Thompson is uh, actually a, a Concordia uh, alumnus class of 1956. Uh, so we're presenting a retrospective of his work uh, from our permanent collections and from local collectors. Then I'm not quite sure, well, we'll probably be meeting before our next big show opens, so we'll leave that until then. Great, and so you're, you're open for in-person uh, visits into the, the galleries now? We, we are, uh, 
uh, we, uh, we are managing it by appointment only in order to ensure that we have uh, good uh, contact tracing. So just uh, if you're interested in, uh, well, either seeing our exhibits online or making an appointment, you can, you can go over to the rourke.org. Okay. Thank you. All right, well, I don't have anything to share um, for my own arts world. Um, so um, I guess if there's no other announcements um, or questions or comments or anything, then um, we will adjourn today's meeting and we meet again uh, in March on the 15th. 15th of March, and will that be at 4 o'clock or 4.30? That'll be 4.30. So 4.30, the third Monday of each month at 4.30 is our standard meeting time, and due to uh, holidays in January and February, we usually have to modify. Right, but the rest of the year should be pretty much consistent on that third Monday. Okay, thanks everybody. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.